por ese cerro nevado. Here I am at one of the most famous World Heritage Sites in the world. 2,430 metres high and six centuries old, Machu Picchu is the ultimate gringo destination. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Most people don't just fly straight to Machu Picchu because that would be skipping out on the rest of what Peru has to offer. Instead we flock to the capital city Lima to visit museums, stuff our faces and begin what is known as the Gringo Trail. If San Francisco and Los Angeles had a Latin American love child, it would be Lima. Peru's capital city is blanketed in Pacific fog and orchestrated by the sound of crashing waves and beeping horns. We spent two days here before moving further south along the coast to Paracas, I say we because my dad, the biggest gringo of them all, has joined me in Peru for three weeks. Paracas is home to the Ballistas Islands, also unaffectionately known as the Poor Man's Galapagos. The islands are home to an amazing amount of marine life and various species of bird, as well as a national reserve featuring beaches with red sand. On the subject of sand, there was no shortage of it in Huacachina, a small oasis in the middle of the desert where there was nothing to do except... <laughs> Arequipa had a little more going for it. The city's white colonial buildings glisten in the sunshine under the watchful eye of El Misty. We are currently in Araquipa doing cultural things like this trip to the Monastery de Santa Catalina. The next day we booked a two day trek to hike both sides of Colca Canyon, the second deepest canyon in the world. Okay, it's 5am and we are literally about to hike up of Colca Canyon. It's times like this where I think, what the fuck am I doing with my life? It was probably the most physically taxing thing I've ever done. 1,200 metres downhill and then up. Not even the condors or the scenery could distract me from the pain in my legs. But we finally made it to the top. <laughs> good night's sleep, we were ready to make our way to our next destination. We are just on a boat on our way to the island of Lake Titicaca. I truly hope that it lives up to its name. Lake Titicaca is the largest lake in South America and the highest navigable lake in the world. As well as featuring several natural islands such as the picturesque island of Tequil, more famously, the lake also features 42 floating islands, home to the indigenous Yuru people. Our final destination was Cusco, once the capital of the Incan Empire and consequently one of the most interesting and welcoming places I've ever visited. It was from here that we begin our Inca trail, but first, we had a bit of warming up to do. 80% of this part of my trip has either spent breathing really heavily or feeling sorry for my dad. Are you okay, Dad? <laughs> Seeing the ancient Incan terrace salt ponds of Maris, which are still in use today, along with the sacred valley of the Incas, was a poignant reminder that the world we live in only exists because of the technology and traditions of our ancestors, their work, their exertion. And as dusk fell on the ruins of Oliantambo, it dawned on me that my work and my exertion were still yet to unfold. 
because my next stop was the Inca Trail.